Today, this is the second day, national conference for CAA, and tomorrow we will have a rally um, in Copy Square to support fair admissions. We have two events together, and we hope you enjoy your time here. Uh, uh, now, please welcome President of CAA Action, Andy Zhang. And uh, thank you, Boston, for your hospitality. And uh, I want to give a warm uh, welcome to our guests uh, as well. Um, in recent years, the Chinese Americans have been increasingly alarmed by the increased race based affirmative action policies and practices in elite school admissions and in workplaces. And not to mention, the wave of Asian segregation legislation in the mostly Democrat Party controlled state legislation across the entire country. And both of these impose racial policies in a very overt way. Those policies and their practices are essentially racial discrimination, disguised as social justice and equality. And they often hurt the Chinese Americans most. Then in 2016, a new unconventional presidential candidate came on, and many Chinese Americans felt a fresh and unprecedented excitement about the US politics and general elections for the first time. Perhaps because for the first time, we saw a candidate who speaks his mind and shares our mindset, who speaks common sense, who talks about the real problems we're facing, and who is certainly not politically correct. <laughs> and never before were so many Chinese Americans inspired to get involved in local and national politics. The year 2016 was a remarkable and historical year for the Chinese Americans, when for the first time, we had tens of thousands of grassroots Chinese Americans who organized and actively campaigned with them for the country Donald Trump. It was a long process, a long journey, and through that process, we realized we must be organized to be more effective, and we must be united to be part <laughs> That's where the inspiration of the Chinese American Association Alliance, CAA and CAA Action, originated. For the past year since the foundation of CAA and CAA Action, CAA has achieved a great deal. We have reached out hundreds of thousands of Chinese Americans nationwide through civic engagement, political participation, and media campaign. Our members have volunteered and played major roles in models of political campaigns, voter registration, canvassing, petitioning, and fundraising. To that I say congratulations. Please give yourself a round of applause. <laughs> and this is no time to be complacent. Chinese Americans have come a long way, but we still have a long way to go. We want to show you, my fellow Chinese Americans and our, our guests, some statistics and, and studies. Asian Americans are the fastest growing demographic, and Asians are projected to actually surpass Hispanics to become the largest immigrant group by the year 2025. That's not too many years away. You can see your children, next generation. However, you only hear people talking about, you know, the black vote, the Hispanic vote, the Latino vote. You've never heard people talking about Asian vote, Chinese vote, right? That's because too many Asians, too many Chinese Americans, they don't vote. Asian Americans have the lowest voter registration rate and voting turnouts, particularly, and unfortunately, for the Chinese. 
Chinese Americans be the largest ethnic group among Asian Americans, and with a population of more than five million, we have the most dismal turnout, 41 percent at the polls. 41 percent. And democracy is all about representation and choices. We can't complain about being treated. Not being treated equally without making an effort to have equal representation or without even showing up at the post. <laughs> we need to answer the challenges Asian Chinese Americans face in national politics <laughs> and civic life, where Chinese Americans and Asian Americans as a whole are largely invisible. Where Chinese Americans often show up to protest. Only with bad things have already happened to us. And this is not a right way to engage or to participate. Engagement and participation are an ongoing process and a state of mind, not a desperate reaction to a really bad situation. And when Chinese Americans do show up at the polls, we tend to make questionable choices. I'm sure many of you know. We Chinese Americans are conspicuously entrepreneur, hardworking, family oriented, self reliant, and certainly hold a great sense of fiscal responsibility. We are a natural conservatives to some extent, and a natural constituency to the party that advocates individual responsibility, fiscal responsibility, and equal opportunity. The troubling fact is, however, that the majority of Asian Americans and Chinese American voters have been voting overwhelmingly for Democrats for more than a decade. In the last general election, Chinese Americans were voting Democrat and Republican presidential candidate at a three to one margin. Three to one. People always say Asians are smart. You heard that all the time. Well, not so smart in politics, because smart people don't vote against their own interests. Let's admit it. Many of us, many of us, fellow Chinese Americans, they vote in a way like turkeys vote for Thanksgiving. <laughs>
take action and take the lead. We may have a unique identity as an immigrant and as ethnic minority. But remember, we are all Americans. against Asian Americans. And President Trump's Justice Department sides with us on this lawsuit. I'm sure most of you already know. What I want to say is some 150 years ago, President Lincoln, the Republican Party, and it was later. I believe President Trump and the Republican Party we a solid conservative majority 